Welcome to Iraq. I'd like to give you a little tour. From someone who was a fighter, and that was my career, these guys are fighting on a whole different level. They're fighting for democracy. They're fighting for our freedom. They've given so much for us. We need to give so much back to them. Most IEDs, how they happen is while you're driving, they wait until your vehicle passes by, and they hit a switch, and it blows up. It rocks you. It's, it's hot. It's dusty. There's smoke. You're disoriented. It is the most terrifying experience you've ever been through. Boom! It feels like your whole chest caves in, all the air sucked out of You can feel the pressure on your entire body. The signature wound in these wars, Iraq and Afghanistan, is polytrauma. You get your legs blown off and you have a traumatic brain injury. The brain injury needs to be known that it actually has a consequence. Even a mild brain injury is going to have a consequence. I didn't know my injuries. I couldn't remember a week, two weeks, and when I came through, I would still miss weeks at a time. I've been banged around quite a bit. Uh, I never took shrapnel, never took uh, any bullets, but there's uh, definitely something different. We need to get the military and the Veterans Administration and the civilian world all talking, all sharing patients, all helping bring back the brains of the nearly 400,000 men and women who have deployed since the beginning of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars who are projected to have TBI. The veterans, uh, in many cases, particularly due to uh, brain injury, post-traumatic stress, and other, other issues, uh, don't adapt very well. They really need uh, support services. Well, SERV stands for Supportive Education for the Returning Veteran. They've got classes set aside just for vets, and then they have a tremendous success rate as they go regular classes. Astoundingly, statistics show that our returning veterans are experiencing roughly twice the level of unemployment of the regular civilian population. These VA book rehab and counseling centers um, do prepare veterans, you know, with resumes and, and vocational assessment and, and direction, etc. But there's very little activity in terms of actual job placement brokering these young people. With traumatic brain injury, it is so very important to diagnose it and treat it early on. It's very important because we know, for instance, with studies that have been done throughout the country in the civilian world with TBI, that about 90% of individuals who have a mild to moderate traumatic brain injury will become substance abusers within a year, 90%. So many veterans that are coming home uh, you know, are honorable people who've served and sacrificed for their country, but they come home and they're having issues that get them into trouble and, and put them in a position in which now they're the bad guy. They charged me with attempted murder, felonious assault, aggravated robbery. Most of the people that we see in a veteran's court had no problems before they went overseas, before they went to Afghanistan or Iraq. They were not drug users, they weren't violent, they weren't having temper problems, they weren't having hypersensitivity, all those medical issues that you see. When they come back, they're damaged. Switching from being military just to civilian is hard because there really isn't a lot of cohesion when it comes to civilians than there is for, for military. There's a lot of difference. And that makes it very hard for any kind of vet coming out of, out of the service to get used to again. Post-traumatic stress, TBIs, because of these situations, there's good people doing things that are not normally in their character. You know, because they don't know how to transition, they, they think it's just a personal battle that they're dealing with on their own, and it's hard to transition back into you know, this world being used to that world. When you get back into civilian life, there's got to be a transition there, which I don't think is presently available. Uh, it may take up to a year to train a combat infantryman. If he comes back, he might have a month to readjust. These guys that come back and they're damaged, they're, their spirits are broken. You know, they're, they're broken, but they're not defeated. So if we could help resurrect the warrior through any type of interaction, this we're asking. Time for we in the civilian world to do our part as well, because we owe it to our veterans to do that. To me, if you're going to send somebody off to a war, then you're going to take care of what happens to them when they come back. That's just, that's just what you do. We can all work together and help bring back this brain, this body, this warrior, this family, this community to a good steady state where there will be employment, where there will be hope, and where there will be a future.